I'm about to tell you has to be the most shocking story I've ever heard. Like, ever. It's about a 12-year-old girl named Jan who was abducted by a family friend that took her to Mexico and forced her to marry him. Jan was made to believe she was half alien and was assigned this crazy mission to save their alien planet. Before she could complete the mission, Jan was brought back to her parents' house and forced by her abductor to stay quiet about the whole thing. Two years later, he abducted her again. Jan Rober grew up in Pocatello, Idaho. Her dad, Bob, owned a floral shop and her mom, Mary Ann, stayed home. The Brobergs were the ultimate picture-perfect family. They were all super close, lived in a nice neighborhood, and were actively involved in their church community. They went to church every week where the mom, Mary Ann, directed the church choir. One Sunday in 1972, Mary Ann was up on stage with the choir when she looked out and noticed a new family in the congregation. After the service, Mary Ann went up to introduce herself. The dad of the family was named Robert Birchtold. He was attending church with his wife, Gail, and their five kids. Both families became instant besties. All of the kids loved playing together and the parents got along well too. Bob especially liked Robert. He was a charismatic and generous businessman who was fun, entertaining, and great with kids. Robert became like a second dad to Jan and her sisters. They gave him the nickname B, and B had a special liking for Jan. He gave her the nickname Dolly. So the Brobergs didn't see it at the time, but Robert was super predatory and manipulative. He preyed on the family and made them do some really weird stuff. Like, really weird. He used to make Marianne bring him lunch at work, even though he had his own wife and his own two hands to make his own meals. And he would constantly hype her up about how pretty she was and basically always said a bunch of stuff he knew she wanted to hear. One time, Robert was in the car with Marianne when he charmed her with his words and then he kissed her. Um, they are both married and not to each other. And that brings us to Robert's craziest relationship, the one he had with Jan. So in the early 70s, Robert was reprimanded by the LDS church for getting caught for victimizing a bunch of other young girls, which is already a major red flag. Robert was going through therapy for it and convinced Jan's parents that part of his therapy was to spend time alone with little girls to get over his obsession. So he asked them if he could sleep in Jan's bed with her for therapeutic reasons. And they let him. Robert slept in Jan's bed four nights a week for six months straight. Well, for some reason, the Broberg family was brainwashed into thinking Robert was a good guy. I'm not really sure how they didn't see his psycho calculative tendencies, but they didn't see him as a threat to their daughter. They adored him. So one fall day in 1974, Robert asked Marianne if he could take Jan horseback riding. He told Marianne that he could drop Jan off at her piano lessons and then pick her up to go horseback riding. But Robert never took Jan horseback riding. Instead, he took her to Mexico to get married. And no, I'm not joking. So as soon as Robert picked up Jan from music class, he gave her an allergy pill to take since they were going to be outside with horses. But it wasn't an allergy pill. It was something much stronger. Robert continued to drive the car, but little did Jan know he was headed for the border. She was zonked out and the next thing she remembered was waking up with her arms and legs strapped to a bed. Whoa, that jumped from zero to 100 real quick. Meanwhile, Marianne was waiting for Jan to come home. When she gave Robert permission to take her daughter out, she told him that he had to have her back by dinner time. But dinner time came and went, and Jan wasn't home. Marianne thought to call the police, but Gail stopped her and said she was sure Robert and Jan were okay. So Marianne didn't call the cops until Saturday morning because she didn't want to freak anyone out or upset Gail. I get this woman is trying to think about other people, but at this point, her daughter is missing. Call the cops, woman. Well, when she got in touch with the FBI that Saturday, she got an automated message that they were closed for the weekend, but if it was an emergency, she could call another office. But Marianne didn't want to get anyone worked up if it wasn't really an emergency, so she didn't call back until the next day. Investigators asked Marianne and Bob about Robert's intentions, but they said he didn't abduct their child because he was too good of a guy to do that. If only it worked like that. A while after that, officials found Robert's abandoned car covered in fluid. That can't be a good sign. They started to check out the car and noticed the keys were still inside and the window had been busted. But wait until you hear this. The investigator said the window had been smashed from the inside, not the outside. Based on that, detectives were certain that Robert snatched up Jan and took off in his trailer, but he tried to make it look like they had both been abducted by some other bad guy. Back in Mexico, Jan was being convinced by Robert that they were abducted by aliens. This story just keeps getting crazier and crazier. She was super confused and didn't know where she was or what had happened. But there was an alien-like monotone voice coming through on a tape recorder that told her she was abducted by aliens and must perform a special mission to save their planet. I promise I'm not making this up. There were two aliens on the tapes, Zeta and Zephra. In the recordings, they told Jan that she was part alien. They said Marianne was her mom, but Bob wasn't her biological dad because she actually had an alien dad. 
So this all sounds super crazy on the outside, but Jan was just 12 years old and grew up in a pretty sheltered Mormon household. She thought the alien backstory sounded like the story of baby Jesus because Jesus was born to Mary and Joseph, but Joseph wasn't really his dad, it was God. So Jan Heike believed this whole alien thing. And here's where things get wild. The mission was to have a child with her male companion by the time she turned 16. The aliens then told Jan that if she didn't perform the mission, they would take her sister Susan and make her do it. Then she looked over and saw Robert lying on the couch. At that point, she knew that had to be the male companion the aliens were talking about. Robert was acting all sleepy and groggy, and once he woke up, he told Jan that they had been abducted by UFO on their way to the horse stable. This man is neurotic. And he literally has five kids and a wife back in Idaho who have no idea that he's doing all this. Okay, so over time the aliens kept talking and basically instructed Jan to have relations with Robert. Oh, and I forgot to mention, but in Mexico at the time, you could get married as early as 12, so Robert actually made Jan get married to him. This girl is 12 years old. About a month after Robert initially took Jan, he called his brother and asked for him to talk to Marianne and get written permission from her to let Robert and Jan come back to get married in the US. Thankfully, Marianne didn't fall for Robert's trap this time. She went to the police with Robert's brother to fill them in on the situation. Over time, the cops tapped into Robert's phone calls with his brother and they were able to find out the location of Robert and Jan. The US detectives then contacted the Mexican police who were able to track down the two and hold them in prison. Jan and Robert were placed in separate cells at first, but Robert gave one of the prison guards his gold ring to bribe him into letting Jan down into his cell. Wow, Robert instructed her to tell the family that he had taken her on a vacation without running it past them. He told Jan that Zeta and Zethra said she was not allowed to talk about four things. The aliens, the mission, their physical relationship, or the sleeping pills. If Jan said anything about those four topics to her family, Robert said the aliens told him that she would be vaporized, her sister Susan would be taken away, her other sister Karen would go blind, and her father Bob would be removed. She was also told to stay away from any men in her life, even her dad, because it would mess up their mission. Jan was finally reunited with her family and held up the lie Robert told her. On her flight back home from Mexico, Jan wouldn't even sit by her dad because she was trying to obey the whole stay away from dudes rule. When Jan's family asked about her vacation to Mexico, she was super short and didn't go into detail about anything. The only thing she really said was that they went parasailing. Hmm, I don't know about that. I bet she wasn't even sunburned or anything. So once the newlyweds got back to the US, Robert was arrested for abducting Jan, but was never charged. Robert was released from custody and investigators told the Brobergs to stay away from him. But of course, they couldn't. And Robert was back in Jan's life. When the two were left alone together, which should have never happened, Robert would bring up the mission. He talked about how they still needed to complete it in order to save the alien planet. He was also writing a bunch of love letters to Jan, but at the same time, he was engaging in relations with Marianne. Jan's mother. I literally have no words at this point. Marianne had an affair with Robert that lasted for about eight months. Once Bob found out, he filed for a divorce, which was a huge deal for the religious town of Pocatello. But Bob and Marianne had a heart to heart where they came to the conclusion that they loved each other too much to get a divorce. Wow. This is a trip of a story. Robert eventually made it to trial for the abduction of Jan, but due to the little girl's fear of speaking out in her parents' whole affidavit thing, there wasn't really anything against him. Robert ended up taking a plea deal where he admitted guilt in exchange for a five-year sentence that was later reduced to just 45 days. He then moved to Wyoming and bought a family fun center, which is kind of like a bootleg amusement park. Jan was still in touch with her male companion, and she was also still under the impression that she had to complete this mission. Once she got word about the family fun center, she begged her parents to let her go to Wyoming to work there over the summer. They were not about it, but Jan persisted until Marianne came around and bought her a flight to go there. Bob was Marianne is on some pretty thin ice. She better watch her step. And once Jan got to Wyoming, the mission continued. After her summer in Wyoming, Jan was flown back home, but she would only be there a few weeks until getting abducted again. At this time, she was 14. They called Robert, but he said he didn't know where Jan was. At that point, Bob and Marianne were too embarrassed to be honest about what happened, so they literally told people that Jan was with her grandmother because they didn't want to admit that their daughter had been abducted for a second time. They didn't even call the cops until two weeks after she went missing. Two weeks. A lot can happen in two weeks. So around that time, Robert had just begun his month and a half prison sentence. After a short stint in jail, he moved to Salt Lake City where he lived in his trailer. For the next three months, the Brobergs regularly called Robert while detectives were listening in because they all knew Robert had something to do with Jan's disappearance. Little did they know, Jan was in California. Wait, what? 
So when Robert took Jan the second time, he drove her to California and enrolled her in an all-girls Catholic boarding school under the name Janice Tobler. Robert told the nuns at the school that he was a CIA agent and Jan was his daughter. He said they escaped Lebanon, but Jan's mom didn't make it out alive. After that, he told the nuns he was still working for the CIA and there were still people after him. Detectives were eventually able to figure all of this out. They arrested Robert and flew Jan home to California. Robert eventually went to trial for abducting Jan a second time, but he was not convicted. Instead, the judge just sent him to a mental facility in June of 1977, but he was only there for six months before getting released. And after Robert was let out, he was still in touch with Jan a bit. By that point, she started to realize the torment Robert put her through, but she still kind of believed the whole mission thing and her 16th birthday was coming up. Well, when Jan woke up on her birthday, everything was normal. She wasn't pregnant, Karen wasn't blind, her dad wasn't gone, and she hadn't been vaporized. Jan first told her best friend Caroline and her sister Karen. They were so shook about the whole thing and told Jan to go to her parents and fill them in on everything. That day, Jan told Marianne and Bob everything. Robert was still never charged, but the Brobergs were finally able to give Jan the resources she needed to cope with the whole thing. Jan was granted the restraining order against Robert for the rest of her life. But even with the order, Robert didn't stay away from Jan. He didn't want to go to jail, so instead he decided to end it all by popping some pills. To this day, Jan and Marianne continue to advocate for victims of assault. Their main goal is to encourage people to speak up and seek help to prevent something as awful as what happened to them. Well, now that Robert has passed, I hope Jan is able to find more closure knowing he isn't around to taunt her. Even still, that demented man had already done so much damage to her and her family without any real consequences. Honestly, when I first heard this story, I thought it was made up. I was so shook about how strange Robert's relationship was with the Brobergs that I thought it had to be fake. Yeah, you could say this story is bananas, and I've got banana bread to prove it. <laughs>